Hello friends. This week's contemplative uh, video is on uh, furthering again our um, thesis uh, in our study of genuine mysticism and genuine uh, shamanism. And, uh, and as you've probably noticed, that uh, this study has uh, really taken a, a comparative religions uh, perspective. And the reason for that is uh, I really don't believe that we can understand uh, mystics uh, in, within, let's say, we cannot understand an individual mystic without placing him or her into the context of other mystics at least in, the, in that particular mystic's uh, tradition. And I don't believe that we can understand mystics of one religion or tradition without examining the mystics of other religions and traditions. And this is in fact uh, well respected anthropology in which we study uh, one culture to understand another culture. And, there, and there, part of the reason for that is, is uh, there may be a lot known about a particular subject or um, component of a particular culture and not so much seen in another culture, but uh, we might be able to recognize common themes and then, uh, and then uh, speculate um, or use those common themes as a means of um, predicting uh, human behavior in another culture. Okay, so this is basically a comparative religion's perspective on shamanism and mysticism. And as you recall, I'm looking for the depth in shamanism and mysticism, not in the breadth. Because I think the breadth is too variable. And uh, whereas uh, I believe the depth, uh, uh, in the depth, we see a lot of very strong similarities, for instance, between Teresa of Avila and Rumi and Kabir. So, uh, so I'm always looking for uh, those subjects to study who resemble uh, Rumi, Kabir, Patanjali, and Siddhartha Gautama to uh, strengthen my, uh, my depth uh, approach to mysticism and, and mysticism and shamanism. So uh, along the way we're going to have to do a fair amount of unpacking of religion and I understand that that's going to probably offend some people uh, who members of those religions uh, but nonetheless we have to unpack our subject or we're not going to understand it. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, mainstream religion and how it is unlike mysticism and shamanism. And, uh, and so mainstream religion uh, typically expresses itself in um, uh, blind faith in a religious belief system uh, and its, uh, its expression is typically expressed in um, uh, following some kind of ethical system, uh, prayer, methods of prayer, uh, oftentimes some kind of ritual form of ritual behavior, uh, a ceremonial cycle, a liturgy, and a doctrine. And all that is supported by their doctrine. And their doctrine is going to be interpreted and translated within the focus of their uh, simplified belief system of faith, ethics, uh, and, um, and belief. And in contrast to that, uh, the mystics tend to come from contemplative traditions. And contemplative traditions uh, usually have all that faith and the doctrine and ritual cycle and so forth, but they also add in the component of meditation and oftentimes contemplation. And it's really the mystics who emphasize the contemplation component. They've got the uh, belief system, uh, the prayer, the ritual cycle oftentimes of the mainstream religion and they have the uh, meditation component of the contemplative 
traditions, but they add into that the uh, component of contemplation, or otherwise known as samadhi, which is the religious experience. And that is what um, separates mystics from all other religious belief systems or religious points of view, is that the mystics uh, claim that they are having direct religious experiences and they're getting to them typically when we study the mystics in almost every case they come from contemplative traditions which means that they are practicing meditation among other religious behavior. 